Welcome to our conversation on 5G RAN automation. This is Ruth Brown for Light Reading, and today I'm joined by Rhonda Holloway and Dave Alabar from Fujitsu. So firstly, hi Rhonda and Dave, it's fantastic to have you both here. I'm really looking forward to our discussion and our deep dive into 5G RAN automation. Hello Ruth. Hi. Hi there. Hi. So, to start the conversation, firstly, I'd like to come to you first, Rhonda, and I'm wondering if we can talk about the main challenges facing telecom operators as they seek to deploy 5G networks. So thinking about the challenges that may need to be overcome. Um, well, obviously, the telecom industry is evolving rapidly, and new technologies and applications are emerging quickly as user demands change. So new RAN technologies that'll play a critical role in this evolution, number one has got to be the move to 5G. Um, it's high data rates and low latency services that can be enabled by things like massive MIMO, beamforming, and network slicing, again, has to be number one on the list. Um, next is going to be the growth of IoT. Narrowband IoT, long-term evolution of machines will be important to providing the low power and wide area connectivity that many of these IoT applications require. Um, we think the rise of edge computing is also on the list. Um, as more computing power is moved to the edge of the network, RAN technologies will play a crucial role in enabling those low latency communication between devices and the edge computing infrastructure. And that involves technologies like mobile edge compute and cloud RAN. And then finally, there's the move towards virtualization. Uh, virtualization is a key trend for MNOs as operators seek to reduce cost and increase flexibility by moving away from proprietary hardware and towards software-based solutions that are open. Wonder, can I also ask you what you think the role of cloud native architectures and RAMs and how these architectures are helping telecom operators to improve scalability and also agility? So cloud native architectures are inherently highly scalable, flexible, and resilient. Um, overall, cloud native architectures can help telecom operators improve network scalability um, and their agility by enabling faster and more efficient deployment of RAN functions. And that includes supporting dynamic resource allocation, enabling deployment in edge computing environments, um, and then helping operators improve network scalability and agility um, in, in multiple ways. So that's going to be things like separation of the control and user plane. Um, you know, that allows operators to scale the control plane independently of the user plane, which improves network efficiency and reduce cost. Next is going to be containerization. Uh, cloud native architectures typically use containerization to enable fast and efficient deployment of network functions. That is closely followed by CICD, which is continuous integration and continuous deployment, um, which uh, basically includes CICD, continuous testing and deployment, which again, speeds up application development automation. Um, Orchestration is gonna make that list, dynamic resource allocation, which uh, we mentioned earlier as, as part of the separation of control and user plane. Um, and then finally, edge compute. Uh, cloud native architectures bring RAN functions closer to end users. This helps reduce latency and improves the user experience, um, and it can improve network scalability by offloading some of the processing and data storage requirements to the edge. Brilliant. Thank you, Wanda. So, moving to you now, Dave, I wonder if we can talk about how we would measure success criteria for RAN automation and closed loop control. Um, specifically, what metrics will we be using to evaluate the effectiveness of these solutions? Thanks, Ruth. So in, in terms of measuring success of a RAN automation or closed loop case, uh, it's important to understand the effectiveness of the different areas for improvement. So we anticipate looking at things like time to resolve issues, mean time between failures, mean time to repair, network availability, uh, reduction in manual intervention, overall customer satisfaction, and perhaps uh, most importantly, return on investment to these different uh, cases. Okay, and what do you see as the role for RAM technologies to support use cases and services such as connected vehicles, smart cities, industrial IoT, and those kind of applications? So in terms of supporting these different areas, there's uh, th there's a number of different cases that, that we'd be looking at here. Uh, we, we see 
the network slicing moving into areas like public safety communications, industrial automation, healthcare, uh, and, and there's a number of challenges that come into play when we're looking at those different cases. So here we're looking at uh, making sure that your network architecture is able to be supportive of these different areas, right? Uh, so that requires flexibility, scalability, infrastructure in place, things like that. Uh, you also have to be prepared in terms of management and orchestration of these scenarios. So the, this is bringing in the right pieces to support network slicing and allowing management and orchestration of those pieces to be dynamic across time. You have to do that in a secure manner, uh, making sure that uh, both the network itself is secure as well as the supporting systems, the management and orchestration interfaces. You have to ensure interoperability uh, and that includes interoperability in the uh, network itself and also to external systems as you're interfacing with uh, customers and partners. There's also support of the SLA agreements uh, around all those services and slices. And then obviously making sure all of this is done in a cost-effective manner. Mm -hmm. So Dave, in the future, how will network automation and closed route control be used to improve network performance, do you think? Uh, what we're looking at is trying to make sure that we're realizing uh, some of the automation and closed loop control use cases to improve that performance. Uh, so to enable that, both the operators and the vendors need to continue to invest in network automation, as well as pushing into new areas such as AI and machine learning that, in, that enables them to improve accuracy, efficiency, and reliability of those automated network operations. Uh, beyond that, uh, to ensure the closed loop is integrated with the technology such as network slicing, edge computing, the cloud native architectures, and to enable that development. So those we see pushing into specific areas such as multi-RAN optimization, uh, the, the closed loop control cases, uh, where we're making sure that the network is being properly instrumented and exposing the information, as well as enabling the control points that are needed to facilitate that closed loop control uh, and application of policy. And also, as we, as we mentioned before, uh, bringing AI and machine learning into that uh, appropriately, looking at where it adds value to the overall solutions there. So moving on to discuss network slicing, how do you anticipate this being used to support mission critical applications and services? And what challenges must be overcome to ensure that slicing is effective? So in, in terms of network slicing, network slicing is enabling the, the single network to be partitioned into multiple logical networks or slices, right? Uh, and in doing that, the, the slices can support those mission critical applications and services uh, some of those, for example, would be public safety communications, industrial automation, and healthcare. We do see a number of challenges that are going to be coming up with regards to implementing those different spaces. So first off, there's network architecture. Uh, slicing requires flexible and scalable network architectures uh, that enable both the dynamic deployment capability, utilization, uh, flexibility within the functions, uh, and then, of course, uh, for the next concern, management and orchestration. So given that flexibility, there's more complexity and the slicing requires enhancements in terms of management and orchestration of that system in order to control the network slices, allocate the resources properly, enforce QoS parameters and the like, right? There's also security, opening up the network and ensuring partitioning while ensuring security at the same time. That's an important case. There's also interoperability, both in terms of the network functions and handoffs, as well as interoperability between that management and orchestration and other systems for customers or partners to interoperate there. And then there's the SLA agreements. So tuning and optimizing uh, the performance of these different slices when there are many slices in the network uh, requires optimization of the SLA uh, optimization. And that can be done via traditional QoS mechanisms, 
but also leads us into things like applications, whether it's our apps or X apps in the network supporting QoS, QE type behaviors in that. It's a much more uh, dynamic environment in terms of demands, what's being set up at a given point in time, and therefore it requires more automation and intelligence as opposed to just relying on traditional functions. And then finally, there's the challenge of overall cost of implementing all of this. So that is a, a challenge and Fujitsu's obviously working to tackle all those. Fantastic, thank you, David. So moving back to you, Rhonda, we've obviously spoken about the number of challenges, we've got the new technologies, the, you know, the new services, advanced services coming into 5G. What recommendations could you give telecom operators about working with equipment vendors and also software providers to co-create, test new round solutions? And what benefits do you think can be gained from these collaborations? So the benefits of collaboration can be significant. Um, MNOs can leverage the expertise of their partners to develop innovative brand solutions that meet specific requirements and use cases. And that can look like um, joint development. It can be proof of concept testing. It can be field trials. And um, probably the one that's nearest and dearest to Fujitsu's heart is um, the collaboration and open innovation platforms. Uh, MNOs can work with equipment vendors and software providers on open platforms that enable collaborative development and testing of brand solutions. Um, these, these kind of platforms provide a collaborative environment where partners can share ideas, collaborate on development, and test solutions in a controlled environment that is trusted and secure. Fantastic. Well, Rhonda and Dave, thank you so much for your insights today. I've really enjoyed our conversation about 5G RAN automation, and um, I wish you well in the future. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks, Ruth.